Hi everyone, Code Queen Nayeli. I'm going to show you the newest way to do a shrinking header, an animated header, and a floating header. I finally learned the difference between the three. And I'm going to show you how to create it. Super duper simple. No anchors needed this time. Super amazing how fast and easy it is. Let me show you what those three look like. So here's the first one. This is the floating header. Have you ever seen those websites where they have the header towards the middle or the bottom of the page? And then as soon as you scroll up, it seems to stick at the top. Yeah, I know. Well, now we can do that. Well, we could always do that, but now I'm going to show you how to do that if you hadn't figured it out yet. So scroll down, sticks at the top, and then it goes back down again. The next one I'm going to show you is the shrinking header. This is the one where it has a big strip, a big header section at the very top, and then as you start scrolling down, it shrinks. It gets teeny tiny. So it's bigger, and it shrinks, and bigger, and it shrinks. Now there's something else on this page too. I've added the disappearing header as well, because if you keep scrolling down all the way to the bottom, as soon as the footer comes into view, the header disappears completely. Why would you need this? Well, sometimes you have the logo on the footer as well, so it'll look kind of weird and odd if you have the logo up at the top and at the bottom showing at the same time. It'll kind of clash the design. So I'm going to show you how to do this one as well. And the third one, the animated header. This one's much more simpler. It's basically just a color switch. So it could be a transparent color. It can be two different types of colors. When you scroll down, it just changes to a different color completely. Maybe it's transparent before and it becomes black or darker. This is just animated. It's the exact same size. It doesn't go anywhere. It just changes color. Before I show you how to do all of these wonderful headers, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join my Facebook group. There are tons of experts, Wix users, even Wix developers that are ready to help. Search the group. Chances are someone's already asked your question and your answers are right there for you. Let's do the floating header together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare my strips. First, I'm going to take this one out just so you can see that there's nothing there for the design. I decided to go with no color for the header. For the settings, you want to make sure that it is frozen. Then I have two strips, one that's somewhere in the middle of my page and one that's going to go on top where the header is. I went ahead and made sure that they both look identically the same. The one that's going to go inside of the header area needs to be hidden on load. So you're going to right click, click on properties and make sure that this is hidden on load. Now we're going to drag and drop and attach to my header. I'm going to add an anchor. So I go to my menu, click on more, and then I'm just going to drag an anchor somewhere on top of this other strip. And now that I've added the anchor, I'm going to right click, view properties, and on this one, I'm going to turn on viewport enter and viewport leave. I just click the plus sign. Words are automatically entered there. I don't need to change the label. And now I have the code at the very bottom. Basically, I've already written my code. And what it says is when the floating header viewport enters, when it's in view, when, when I can see it, then the top strip is going to hide and the bottom strip is going to show. But when the anchor leaves, from view, then the top strip is going to show and the middle one is going to hide. Now, I don't necessarily need to hide it. I hit it anyway, just in case, um, because they do overlap each other and I don't want them to see double. So that's what I did there. I'm done with that part of the code. But now remember that we have other pages. If somebody were to land here, the top strip would be hidden because we hit it on load and we don't have an anchor on this page to activate and trigger the show. So what we have to do instead is add a code 
on the site tab so that way when the page is on ready it's going to get the URL from the current location and if this URL equals the home page this slash right here it, it means home page basically then the top strip is going to hide or else if it's not the home page then this top strip is going to show. Okay, now we move on to the animated header. This is the one that just changed color when you moved. So it's also made up of two strips. In this one, we really do not need an anchor. We're just triggering it with the header. And we only need our code on the site tab. Let's go ahead and recreate it. I have two strips. Let me move them out. For the header, I chose to have it transparent again but no matter what, you still need to make it frozen in order for this to work. Once you have it frozen, we can start adding our strips. Here's the trick. What you want to do is you want to add one strip inside of the header and make it a little bit small. Then grab your second strip so that way it attaches to the header, but it does not attach to the strip that you placed before. The second strip, push it back, and this strip, you can resize it to make it the same size once again. You can drag and drop all of the items that you had before. Now that we have both strips up in the header, you have to decide which one is going to be shown first and which one's going to be hidden on load. That will basically tell you how you're going to write the code. In my example, I wanted the color strip to show up first and then the black one. I'm going to right click look for my overlapping items, find the black strip. I know the black strip is selected because my properties panel is telling me that the strip that I have selected, its name is black strip. From here, I'm going to make sure that on this properties panel, I have selected hidden on load. So go ahead and right click, click on the overlapping items, select the header, and view properties. This will open up the properties panel for the header. From the properties panel, you have to trigger the viewport enter and viewport leave, meaning when the header area uh, leaves and enters, you're gonna be triggering something. I went ahead and relabeled mine instead of using the automated words. I have placed the word enter and placed the word leave, basically. In my code, I have export function leaves an event is going to happen, the bright strip is going to hide, and then the black strip is going to show. When the header enters, then the bright strip shows and the black strip hides. The last piece of code that hides the header when the footer comes into view is basically the same thing that we just did. On the footer, we right click, we select the footer just in case you have any, any overlapping items. Click on View Properties, and you will also trigger Enter and Leave. Then the code reads, when the footer enters, I want the black strip to hide. And when the footer leaves from view, then I want the black strip to show again. And this is how both are triggered from the footer and the header. You're done with that one. Let's move on. The shrinking header is the one where you have one giant strip and one small strip. Now the reason I wanted to do this one last is many people have already tried to do this one and they have successfully coded it to create that animation but I have heard this complaint many many times once their buttons or menu gets to this point they seem to be blocked by the larger strip because the header is really big I did a small trick that I'm going to show you right now inside of the editor this is how mine is made up I have two strips, one big one, one small one. The very first thing that you do is you do not, I repeat, do not make the header the size of your big strip. You're going to make it smaller. Once it's small, you're going to have to build your content information after you've added the strips in. You get the first strip, You get the second strip, also make it super small. You drag it 
enough to attach to the header, but not too far that it attaches to the other strip. So now both of them are in the header. Enlarge the smallest strip, then you push it back. Now that it's pushed back, using the dots, not the arrows, using the dots, pull it all the way down, as big as you want it to go. This will help any buttons that are underneath to not be covered. One by one, you're going to be adding all the items that belong to that strip. After you're done with that strip, you're going to push it to the back and then do the other strip. And that is how you rebuild it. Once you have both prepared, then you're ready to continue with the coding process. Just like the other menus, we have to activate the header. So make sure you right click the header if you haven't already, go to the overlapping items, select the header, and click View Properties. We want to activate the view port in and out. So click on those, add those to your page, and also make sure that the header is frozen. If you don't freeze your headers, there is no point of you animating any of your headers because no one will see them. Now you move on to the code page. This is my code, the small strip dot hides and the large strip dot shows uh, whenever the header comes into view when it enters. When it leaves, it does the opposite. And also for the footer, I went ahead and added the animation here. Um, when the footer enters, then the small strip completely disappears, and when the footer leaves, then the small strip appears again. Which actually my code is wrong, so let me change that. <laughs> okay, so now you've learned how to do animated header, shrinking header, floating header, and disappearing header. You're going to have a lot of fun designing your sites. What did you think? Did you get it? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. You'll get notified when I upload another Wix code video. Remember, if you have any questions, please join the Facebook group so others there and myself can help. It is the fastest way to get help, I promise. I'll see you soon. Bye.